Hello friends. So we have been seeing about circle diagram in a lot of videos now. Uh, so in the previous video, we have actually seen an important concept actually where we have to draw the slip line in order to make the circle diagram analysis graphical uh, throughout the entire process. So today uh, we have seen circle diagram many times. Right? So we have always drawn the circle diagram from some theoretical data. But how to actually draw the circle diagram when you have a machine with you? Somebody asks, they give you a machine, what uh, tests you can do? And with that test results, how can you find the circle diagram? Or how can you draw the circle diagram? That is the topic for today's video. It's a very simple topic. If you know uh, the basics of the no load test and the block rotor test, I don't think it will be very difficult. This will be a, mostly this will be a short video. So we will just see something very interesting. So I was going through all these videos on circle diagram. So excluding this video, not including this video, uh, there are almost nine videos, right? There are almost nine videos on circle diagram alone. And this is going around 224 minutes. This nine videos in total, it is about 224 minutes. And that's around some, almost it's some 3.5 or 3.7 hours, I think. Okay. And if you include this video also, which may take uh, again a 20 minutes more. So it's almost like, um, say if, uh, almost four hours of content on one single topic. And I think that is the, this is the highest I have spent, highest time which I have spent on one particular topic, that is the circle diagram. Other than that, uh, in most of the topics, we complete it within one hour. The theoretical part, at least it gets over uh, within one hour. But this particular topic, which I've seen, almost all the videos are about 20 minutes and uh, it is taking, it has taken a lot of effort in making these videos. Now, why I wanted to bring this up is that many people, uh, even sometimes before watching the videos, uh, usually ask me a question that whether this is important for gate or this is important for that exam or this is important for this exam. See, if you are uh, well, uh, you have all the basics thorough, okay, of the machines and you want to just pick out one topic, maybe that question is reasonable. But if you are trying to understand the concepts, understand the basics or you don't have your basics proper, you want to learn the subject, uh, if you, for example, you want to learn induction machines, that is a very wrong question to ask. Okay. So first of all, whether this will come in gate, so that I don't know. So if anybody knew that, my, they would become really rich. See, that's a very uh, closely guarded secret, whether a question will come in the next gate or the other gate. So some people can analyze maybe the 10 years of question papers and then they can tell that maybe this topic doesn't come. But then if you are unfortunate, maybe the next year this question might come, some talk question related circle diagram or some other topic might come. See, uh, there, there was some, uh, I don't remember the exact year where there was very few questions from electrical machines and electrical machines is a very important subject for electrical engineering. So you go through the entire subject and finally when you write the exam, you see that it is hardly coming for three or four marks. Okay. And in some year, almost 20 marks uh, have come from machines. So it is very unpredictable. So why I wanted to tell is that maybe circle diagram might not have come or some other topic might not have come uh, in the exams. Okay. So, but the important thing is if you're trying to learn the subject, See, all my videos are very connected. Okay, So if you miss a link, you will not be able to understand the next video. That's why I always tell you to go through those videos continuously. You, I have made the playlist so you can go through the videos one by one because the technique which I use is always, uh, there's a lot of effort in uh, arranging the topics actually. So one topic will help you understand the next topic. So that is how the basic uh, thing works. And another thing here is that, see, uh, as students, you should always keep your mind fresh okay? and you have to try to understand things. Maybe that will not come for an exam, but then it is keeping your brain busy. And see, if you only try to learn important things which comes for a particular exam, then you will forget those topics. But if you go in a systematic way in understanding the subject properly, then that will stay in your brain. And that is how you exercise your brain. See, in my case, I don't have to write any exams, so I don't have to learn all these things. So what do I do to keep my brain fresh? See, I try to maybe, uh, I like music, so I try to learn a new song, okay? I try to buy heart that song. I try to understand that tune. Or maybe I like magic, so I try to learn some uh, card tricks. So all those things keep my mind fresh at this point of time. Earlier, when I was a student, I tried to learn subjects, uh, topics which were a little bit difficult, so that my brain always keeps active. And as far as... Uh, succeeding in some competitive exam is uh, concerned some people also ask me that if i is this enough for gate see there is nothing like that see whatever i'm covering i'm not trying to teach you for some exam 
I am trying to, for example, I am taking induction motors. I am trying you trying to teach you induction motors in the best way uh, I can. Okay, so my objective is trying to make you understand induction motors. And once you understand induction motors, then it is up to you, because mostly a competitive exams require a lot of practice, numerical practice. And that is up to you. Nobody can come and practice numericals for you. You have to uh, go through different reference books uh, and uh, uh, different problems you have to solve. Previous year gate, previous year IES. You have to have a habit of uh, have that problem solving. That is how you keep your mind fresh, uh, your brain active, and then you can succeed in the competitive exam. Simply by watching some uh, my videos or anybody else's videos, you will not get the success. That that part is up to you. Okay. So what I can do is that I can try to explain the things in the best possible way. Which I am trying to do. Okay, so with all that gyan uh, outside the way, so let us start today's topic. Okay, so today's topic, as I have told you, we have to draw uh, the circle diagram from test data. So we, uh, this is the basic circle diagram we have seen. So I have just uh, put it in a little bit of detail here. So this point here, O, that represents slip equal to zero. This point S represents slip equal to one, and this point C uh, represents slip is a very high value. Okay, so we can put it tending to infinity. So you are having the output line, which is the line connecting this point and slip s equal to one, operating point at slip s equal to one. Then you are having the torque line, etc., etc. So the, all those things that are things that we have seen already. So for example, now you are having a machine. Okay, so you are having a machine which has the following data. So it is a 440 volt machine, three phase, 50 hertz, <coughs> five kilowatt, 1425 RPM. Okay, so the machines uh, some readings are this okay so number of poles is equal to 4 the power factor at which it is operating now it is 0.8 and efficiency of the machine is say 0.8 okay, the efficiency is 80 percentage so now what we can do we can uh, try to find the uh, line current okay so you know that the formula p is equal to root 3 into vl into il into cos theta okay so you are having this p value to be is equal to 5 kilowatts so if you do that that is the biggest blunder you can make okay see this p is equal to root 3 vlil cos theta see this is the line voltage this is a line current okay so this is incoming to the motor okay it is coming into the motor this il is flowing into the motor so this is not the output power whatever given here for a motor whenever they give you a power value like 5 kilowatt or 6 kilowatt something like that it is always the output power unless they mention it specifically it is the input power if they simply give a 5 kilowatt value it is always the output power okay so if you put that here you will uh, make a mistake so this is the input power this is the input power so how to find the input power see they have given the efficiency so the efficiency is the output power divided by input power many students make this mistake especially in dc machines etc you just think that uh, in a dc motor they will give 5 kilowatt and you just use that for the input calculation so that is the output if they give the efficiency, then you have to find the input or if they give the losses, you can also find the input. Okay, the output is input minus losses. Therefore, uh, input is output plus losses. Okay, so now for this equation problem, we can just write it here. So 0.8 is equal to P output divided by P input. So output is 5 kilowatts. Okay, if you divide it by 0.746, uh, you will get in HP also. So the input power is equal to uh, P naught divided by 0.8, right? So it is 5 kilowatts divided by 0 0.8. 5 kilowatts divided by 0 0.8. Okay, we it's a, or 5000 divided by 8. 5000 divided by 0 0.8. So 5000 divided by 0 0.8, just converting it into watts, is equal to root 3 into VL value is 440. IL value we are trying to find out. Right? Assume that it is a star connected stator. And this uh, power factor for this particular condition is 0.8. Okay, so for this particular condition we are finding. So they have not specified that whether this is the rated value. They have just given some values. Okay, uh, so for this particular uh, 5 kilowatt, the IL value is around 10 amperes. IL value is around 10 amperes. So this is something which I wanted to tell you because recently someone asked a question about uh, they were having some confusion regarding this. So that is over. Okay. So you have found out the IL value. Now we will not be using this IL value anywhere. I just wanted to clear that because some people have a uh, wrong understanding about this. So now when you do the no load test, okay, I will not go through the no load test. So when you do the no load test, what are the uh, meter readings you get? You get an ammeter reading. Yeah, and the voltmeter reading is naturally the rated voltage and then you get a watt meter reading right so in the ammeter reading you that value is called the no load current i naught right ammeter value is no load current i naught and the watt meter reading you call it as w naught right and that is the uh, no load uh, power okay so we can always write w naught is equal to 
root 3 into vl into i naught into cos theta naught right so you know that what is vl you know it is the rated voltage i naught you have found out from the ammeter reading w naught you have found out by the watt meter reading therefore this theta naught will be equal to cos inverse of w naught divided by root 3 vl into i naught okay so from the no load test basically what you are getting you can find the value of i naught and you can find the value of theta naught so that is very important here okay so in a phasor diagram if you put it so for example we are drawing the per phase diagram see for circle diagram you can either draw it in per phase uh, diagram or you can draw it as the um, uh, line diagram line uh, thing also but you have to specifically mention whether your circle diagram is the per phase value or it is the uh, with respect to line voltage okay so we will draw for per phase value because that is what we have done till now because that is important when you take the power so if you are taking finding some power so and you are finding it from the per phase uh, circuit when you are when you tell it to someone you have to tell it in three phase okay so that time you will have to multiply that power by three or else somebody asks tells you uh, five kilowatt in three phase when you put it in the circle diagram you have to divide it by three so this is v phase okay so this is v phase now from the no load test what are you getting from the no load test we have found out i naught and theta naught okay so theta naught is the angle between v phase which is VL divided by root 3 if it's a star connection and I naught. So you can get something like this. Okay, so this is your I naught and this is your theta naught. Okay, so that is one part of the circle diagram, right? So this is one part, so this thing we have drawn. This is theta naught. Okay, and next is the short circuit test, not the short circuit test, the blocked rotor test. So second test what we have done is the blocked rotor test. Okay, what did we do in the blocked rotor test? You blocked the rotor, you apply a reduced voltage which is called VBR reduced voltage of VBR so that a current IBR flows and that IBR is usually equal to the rated current for example it's 15 amperes the rated current of the motor you re apply a reduced voltage such so that 15 ampere flows and then you can measure the watt meter reading WBR okay so from here what you can find out uh, so from here you can find uh, again using the same procedure WBR will be equal to root 3 into VBR into IBR okay multiply by cos theta BR this BR is for blocked rotor so therefore theta BR will be equal to uh, WBR divided by root 3 VBR into IBR okay cos inverse cos inverse of this total value so WBR is a watt meter reading during blocked rotor condition VBR is the reduced voltage which is applied uh, during the blocked rotor condition and IBR is the current or the line current which is flowing into the motor during the uh, blocked rotor condition okay so the, these three things are important so now in blocked rotor condition what is the speed of the motor at blocked rotor condition you are not allowing the motor to rotate so n is equal to 0 so that means the slip value will be equal to ns minus 0 divided by ns so it is equal to 1 okay therefore this point s which represent slip is equal to 1 this point s we have seen a lot of time this s equal to 1 is nothing but the blocked rotor point it is nothing but the blocked rotor point right it is clearly the blocked rotor point here okay so now from uh, this blocked rotor test you are clearly getting the information two information you are getting one you are getting the value of ibr and then you are getting the value of theta br so we'll take that and put it in the phasor diagram just like how you have put i naught now if you take this ibr and put it in the phasor diagram you will get a wrong value okay so this IBR, let me tell you that another thing that I want to tell you here, this IBR is the input current. Okay, the IBR is the input current. It is not the rotor uh, current referred to the stator size. Another, that is another thing to remember. Another thing is that this IBR is done at VBR. It is not done at rated voltage. See, in the circle diagram, I have told you this is the locus of, this is the locus of I2. Right, this is the locus of I2. I2 is the rotor current referred to the stator side this is the locus of i2 at v phase at the rated voltage remember that so uh, this ibr which you are getting it is not at rated voltage it is at a reduced value okay so then what it means is that this to put it in the phasor diagram to put it in the phasor diagram you have to convert it in terms of v phase value so it is a direct conversion what you have to do see vbr gives you ibr okay and then what will v phase give you simple question simple mathematics right so this let us call this value as x so x divided by ibr is equal to v phase divided by 
VBR, simple one to one relation. So X is equal to V phase divided by VBR multiplied by IBR. Okay, the only thing you have to understand here is that using the face values and line values, etc. So that is the only thing which you have to understand. So this X value will actually represent the short circuit current. We can call it as ISC because it is like short circuiting the rotor side. So this is the value, this ISC value, you have to put it here. I hope I am clear. Another thing you have to understand here, this ISC is the line current, line current that flows, that flows into the motor, into the motor. That means this is I1 value, into the motor at V phase value, right? And IBR is the uh, current that flows in the blocked rotor condition at reduced voltage VBR, okay, at blocked rotor condition, at blocked rotor condition. So, <coughs> we usually put it like this and we usually put a I2 value from here. But this is not I2 value. This is ISC is not I2 value. It is actually the I1 value, input current to the motor, okay. So, that vector you have to draw it from here to here, okay. So, you have to draw it from here to here. So, that also vector also we can draw quickly. So, it is something like this, okay. So this is the value of ISC, okay. So this has been adjusted for V phase, adjusted for V phase, okay. So VBR, that IBR value you cannot directly take because the locus represents the V phase value, okay. So uh, if you see this is ISC value and this is I0 I not value. So I0 plus I2 is equal to I1, see this is I1 value, right. This is the input current. So this vector here will actually represent the I2 value, see. If I just put that, this vector here, so this is actually the I2 value, this is the I2 value and this angle how did you get? This angle is nothing but uh, theta BR, if I forgot to tell that, this angle I didn't tell you, so this is theta BR, the angle between uh, V phase and ISC is theta BR, okay and this I0 plus I2 from the equivalent circuit you can clearly see, right, so this is this is your I1, this is I0 and this is I2, right. So I0 plus I2 is equal to I1. In this case, ISC is equal to I1. So this is the thing. Now, how to find the circle diagram? Okay, so that is the thing. That is a simple mathematical concept. I will not explain the mathematical concept here. So the basic idea here is that, see this, you know that this point, this vector is lying on the circle, see. This point here at S is equal to 1, this is lying on this particular circle, right? This I2 is lying on this circle. So that means this is the chord of a circle, right? This uh, green line here, this green line here actually forms the chord of the circle. So you can just put a perpendicular bisector for that chord here. So if you put a perpendicular bisector for the chord here, see this will represent the radius. So this will represent the radius of the circle. So you can put your compass here, take this as the origin, uh, the, this is the origin. Put your compass pencil here and complete the circle diagram and you will see that this circle diagram passes through this particular point at S equal to 1. So this point here at the blocked rotor point S is equal to 1, right? And this red line represents your I1 value uh, and this is I2 value and this is I0 value. So the circle diagram is now complete, okay? So now uh, while drawing this uh, circle diagram, scale is very important. For example, uh, you have to initially keep your uh, voltage scale, of course, you have to keep. And another important thing is keeping the current scale. So, for example, you take 1 centimeter represents <coughs> 2 amperes. And for example, your uh, no load current is say <coughs> 4 amperes. For example, I0 is equal to 4 amperes. So, when you put it in your graph paper, this 4 amperes will be represented by how many centimeters? So, 1 centimeter is representing 2 amperes. Therefore, 4 amperes will be represented by 2 centimeters. So this uh, I0 value will be, length will be 2 centimeters and using a protractor you can mark this angle, okay. So once you set the value current scale like this and for example this um, ISC value is say some 80 amperes or say 40 amperes. So ISC value is say, say 40 amperes, okay. ISC value is say 40 amperes. So 1 centimeter is representing 2 amperes, therefore 1 ampere will be represented by 1 by 2 centimeters, therefore 40 amperes will be represented by 20 centimeters, okay. So this length here, from here to here, not this small one, not this green one, the, uh, from the no short block rotor test, you are getting the input current. This is the rotor current. You are getting the input current. So this length will be 
20 centimeters. This ISC length will be 20 centimeters. And after that, you can do this perpendicular bisector thing for this uh, line here, and then you will get all the values. And once you draw the circle diagram, the rest of the things we have seen time and time again, hundreds of times, I think I have told this. So you can just put a line here. So let me just see what was the naming I gave. Okay, see. So we'll just uh, keep some uh, name here. So S, M, and N. Okay. So this is the thing here. So now the next is uh, dividing this into uh, the rotor R1 is to H. You have to divide this line into R1 is to R2, right? You have to divide this total line into R1 is to R2. So how do you do that? See, finding the stator resistance is very simple. You just uh, apply a DC voltage across two windings. And so two into that uh, stator resistance will be equal to uh, v by i. So you can, we have done a numerical also, that is that. But finding uh, for a slip ring induction motor, you can do the same procedure in the rotor side also. So you can get R1 is to R2 value. So in that scale, you can divide this. Okay. But for squirrel cage motors, usually you don't have that information. So either uh, look in the design, uh, if the manufacturer has given the design, so he will be able to give you an R2 value. Now, if he doesn't give the design, you just take 50-50. So you just divide this line into two halves, equal halves. If you, are, if you are able to find R1 and R2, divide it into R1 is to R2. Okay. And then you get this thing. And now finally, then what do you do? Once you divide this into two lines, you can draw, draw what line? You can draw the torque line. So this is the torque line here. So this is the torque line. So this is the torque line. And of course, uh, this particular line, this green line is the output line, right? So this green line is representing the output line. You're representing the output line. Now let us take this diagram to the next page and let us see how to draw or how to find the operating point at a particular uh, for example, that gave us 5 kilowatt, right? So how to find the operating point in this particular circle? Now, if you want, you can also put your slip line, which you saw in the last time. So you can draw your slip line also. So here you will have your line, draw a line parallel to the torque line, and this will represent the slip line, slip line. Where these two will meet, that will represent S equal to 1. Here you are having S equal to 0. See, here this point S equal to 0. So now let us just see for 5 kilowatt how to find the operating point. Now for example, somebody tells you, for example, the induction motor is now having an output power of say 5 kilowatts. Okay. So how can you represent that 5 kilowatts in this particular diagram here? Okay. How to find the operating point for this particular 5 kilowatts? So it is very simple. See, uh, now you have a current scale. Now you have to have a power scale also. Okay. So you see that what is this MN value? So this value is always the no load losses, right? So MN represents the no load loss, no load loss. And uh, you have already measured that no load loss. That is from the watt meter reading of the no load test. So you know this value. For example, it is say some uh, 200 watts. Okay. So you know, you can find this length by measuring uh, using a scale. So you know the length of MN, say for example, that is say um, 2 centimeters. Okay. So 2 centimeters is representing 200 watts. Okay, this W0 you have already found this value, this no load losses already you have found using uh, no load test. So, and you can measure this length using your scale. So, 2 centimeters say represents uh, 200 watts. So, 1 centimeter will be 100 watts. 1 centimeter will represent 100 watts. Okay, therefore, 5 kilowatt will represent how many centimeters? So, 5000 kilowatts. So, five, so 1 centimeter is representing 100 watts. So, for 5000 watts, so you just divide it by 100. 5000 watts will be represented by 50 centimeters. 5000 will be exaggerated. So anyway, uh, I hope you understand the problem. So it will be represented by 50 kilowatts. Now you know that this green line is the output line. So this green line is the output. So anything above that represents the output, right? The anything above that represents the output. So for 50 centimeters, you have to just see from here to here, where do you get 50 centimeters? You just put your scale and try to measure from here to here where you get 50 centimeters. That will be the operating point. But that is not a very elegant technique. Okay, it is not a very good technique. So what do you do? You take 50 centimeters and let us assume that this is your 50 centimeters. Okay, so let us uh, take that as 50 centimeters. Now what you do? See, this is the output line, right? So this green line is the output line. You draw a line parallel to that green line. Like this. Okay. You draw a line parallel to that green line. Now this entire value will be 50 centimeters, right? This entire value will be 50 centimeters. So you just see where it is intersecting. It is intersecting at two points, right? So this is slip equal to zero. So this is the low slip area. And this is closer to slip S equal to one. That is the high slip area. And you never make your induction motor work in the 
high slip area we already seen in the torque slip characteristic there are two operating modes of the induction motor for the same torque it can work in the high slip region or it can work in the low slip region and the low slip region uh, uh, in, and if it works in the high slip region there are going to be a lot of uh, losses associated in the induction motor it is not a good place to work you always work your induction motor in the low slip region so this is high slip region so ignore high slip region because it is closer to this s equal to 1 so you just ignore this you don't take that point so this will be your operating point at 5 kilowatts so this is the point p this is the point p where s uh, where it is 5 kilowatts 5 kilowatts and once you find that point you can find everything right once you get the operating point for example for 5 kilowatts what is the rotor copper loss so you can just put this diagram like this right we put here like this we can just uh, mark some points here so this value here i don't remember what all values i put so this is uh, output line so this is uh, your uh, g let us call this as k and this is q something like that okay so output what is the uh, output power so this is 5 kilowatt naturally it is 5 kilowatts output power is 5 kilowatts and this value the small value here qk will represent the this value will represent the stator copper loss and on top of this gk will represent the rotor copper loss and what will be the uh, air gap power air gap power will be the value from here to torque line right from pk will represent the air gap power okay so once you know the point once you have set this operating point i think by this time you should find everything okay so what is the input current this is the input current what is the rotor current this is the rotor current okay so you can find everything once you know the operating point and how to find the operating point i just told you you just draw a line at correct scale <laughs> draw at the line at correct scale draw a line parallel to this output line draw a line parallel to output line it will intersect at two points take the lower point take the lower point and once you get the point operating point if you go through all the previous videos we have seen how to find different values okay and once you find the length okay for example the um rotor copper loss you find it as 2 kilowatts no you will get in some measurement right so for example you get that as say 1 uh, cm so the rotor copper loss is 1 cm so if you see in this scale you can see that 1 cm is 200 watts okay so uh, for example the p rotor copper loss by measuring in this you get it as 1 cm okay so in actuality it will be 100 watts be 100 watts so another important thing i forgot to mention Uh, see when you are finding this 200 watts right see this is the no load value so this 200 watts now if you are drawing for the per phase thing if you are drawing for this per phase value you have to make sure that you convert this 200 into per phase value so you have to use 200 divided by 3 i forgot to do that but so this will become 100 divided by 3 so uh, accordingly everything will change but if you are drawing it as a line uh, circle diagram using line values you can use this 200 directly okay i hope i am clear i just forgot to do that uh, but of course the concept is entirely same so whenever you are taking the power and trying to put it in the per phase circle diagram you have to convert it into per phase power so if it is three phase system that per phase power will be the given power divided by 3 and only then you have to take the scaling if you are drawing it by line values there is no issue at all okay you can just take it directly but you have to make sure that you mention whether your circle diagram is the per phase uh, circle diagram or the line value circle diagram so mine is per phase okay so this small correction you have to see here just make sure that you go through this okay so with this video we are uh, concluding circle diagram exactly 10 videos we have had circle diagrams almost four hours of circle diagrams you have seen i hope i was able to do justice to this topic because this topic is a very interesting topic once you understand circle diagrams um, doing uh, problems in induction motors or trying to understand induction motors as such becomes very easy it is one of the most uh, one of my favorite topics this circle diagram so i might have been a little bit selfish in going in a little bit depth also so till i see you in the next video is me varun signing off and have a great day thank you